my colleagues, the distinguished judges of the Supreme Court, Sri R. Venkatramani, Learned Attorney General for India, Dr. Adi Shagarwala, President SCBA, Mr. Sukumar Patijoshi, Vice President of SCBA, Ms. Rohit Pandey, Secretary SCBA, Office Bearers of SCBA, Mr. Manoj Mishra, President Skora and Office Bearers, the distinguished members of the Bar Council of India, Mr. Pravin Bhai Parik, may I respectfully refer to you as the President Emeritus of SCBA. <laughs> members of the Bar, officers of the Registry, and of course, families of both my distinguished colleagues, Ms. Sangamitra Bhuyan, Ms. Shweta Bhuyan, who has come here all the way from Mumbai, where she's doing her PhD, and Ms. Anupama Bhatt. First, let me begin by addressing a few thoughts to all the young juniors in the latter part of the auditorium. This is a privilege which you can only have for a few years of your career, because as you progress in life, you'll come more and more to the front. And then you miss out on all the fun and games which go on in the last few rows. What is the function? What is the significance of these functions? Why do you have these functions where you welcome incoming judges? When we were appointed as judges of the High Court, we rose to become judges of the High Court from the bar of the High Court. So all the members of the bar knew us. We had practiced with them. We had been briefed by them. We had appeared against them. So everybody knows everybody. When judges come from the High Court to the Supreme Court, they have spent at least a decade or more, maybe sometimes two decades, a decade and a half away from the bar because they've been judges of the High Court for anywhere up to 16 years, as in my case, and more than a decade in most other cases. So there is this little gap between the time that you were practicing here. All of us have practiced before the Supreme Court, briefed lawyers in the Supreme Court, and I'm sure Justice Bhuyan and Justice Bhatti did so. But the importance of these functions is for us all to realize that though we are seated on this side of the bench, we are all for part of a common mission in this institution. And we are tied together in one noble object of furthering the cause of justice. So whether we are members of the bar, whether we are judges who don this role until you know, the Constitution bids us farewell, it's important for us to realize that there is a certain degree of solidarity between the bench and the bar. And that solidarity is that we stand together for one cause, irrespective of affiliations of religion, language, caste, ideology, in one mission and one mission alone, which is to render justice to common citizens. And therefore, particularly for the younger members of the bar, it is important for us to inculcate these values which have ultimately sustained the Supreme Court and enhanced its reputation as the court at the forefront of the judiciary in the nation. But few things first. I welcome Justice Bhuyan and Justice Bhatti to be judges of the Supreme Court. As I said a few days ago on the occasion of the Independence Day, the aim of our judiciary is to increase access to justice for all the people in our country. Elevating competent judges to the Supreme Court, especially judges who have dedicated years of their lives and decades to serving the Indian judiciary, is one way to enhance the dispensation of justice. On this occasion, I'm reminded of a well-known couplet, Shukriya Tera, Shukriya Tera, Tere Aane Se Raunak To Badi, Varna Ye Mehfil Ye Zazbaat Adhuri Rehti. <laughs> Justice Bhuyan comes from Gohati. He practiced before the principal seat of the Gohati High Court, as well as before the Agartala, Shillong, Kohima, and Itanagar benches of the High Court. Brother Ujjal has had a long and illustrious practice at the Gohati High Court, where he served as a standing counsel for the Income Tax Department for 16 years. Throughout his practice, Justice Bhuyan was a respondent's lawyer. 
but he always says that his practice was always petitioner oriented. This has emerged from the time that he spent as a judge of the Bombay High Court, my own parent High Court, where he headed the tax bench for a considerable period of time. As a tax judge, as a judge heading probably one of the most sought after and complex benches in the Bombay High Court, the tax bench with the high value disputes coming there, Justice Buhyan distinguished and acquitted himself very notably, and he was an extremely popular member of the bench. As I always say, the bar in Mumbai, like in the Supreme Court, is so global and cosmopolitan. They don't really bother about what your background is, where you come from. They welcome you with open arms, provided you're willing to work hard. And I dare say, as in the Supreme Court, lawyers are not attached to the outcome of their cases. They know that most cases decide themselves. And lawyers have this innate understanding of where the balance of justice lies. Justice Buyan, I was very pleasantly surprised to learn, has distinguished himself as an amateur tabla player. That adds to, that adds to the repertoire of talent in the Supreme Court. Just in the coffee lounge today, we were discussing uh, about the wide talent that we have, apart from judicial talent on the bench. Brother, Ma Brother Amanullah is one of the judges who has donned a flying license. So we now have, we know, uh, somebody who has a flying license or had a flying license and <laughs> was competing with, and another colleague who has been competing with Zakir Hussain. <clears throat> Justice Bhuyan served as a judge of the Gohati High Court before being transferred to the Bombay High Court. He was Chief Justice of the Telangana High Court. He has traveled from the Far East to the West, then to the South, and finally his journey has brought him up to the North. Justice Bhuyan spent two years at, in the Mizoram High Court. Uh, he spent years there training the bar, mentoring the bar. So he has seen the legal profession from different perspectives. He's a judge who knows and understands the Northeast, together with being aware of the working of the Indian judiciary across the nation. During his tenure, Justice Bhuyan has worked towards enhancing access to justice by emphasizing on the delivery of quality legal aid services and live streaming of court proceedings. I'm sure that all of us at the Supreme Court will draw upon the experience and expertise of Justice Bhuyan. Justice S. V. Bhatti is a native of Madanapalli in Chittur, Andhra Pradesh. As a lawyer, Justice Bhatti had a special interest in environmental law, civil law, and labor law. He served as a standing counsel for many PSUs, including Bharat Heavy Electricals and Hindustan Shipyard. In 2013, he was appointed as a judge of the Andhra Pradesh High Court, and later he served as a judge and subsequently as a chief justice of the Kerala High Court. Even when he, we, when he moved from Andhra Pradesh to Kerala, he took that move with a great deal of equanimity, and which really shows his great emotional strength. Justice Bhatti has acquired considerable experience and expertise in various branches of law during his long career as a judge. Our brother Bhatti likes to call himself a family man. He considers his wife, Anupama, and their daughters Vishnavi and Akhila to be his pillars of strength. Justice Bhatti's elevation to the Supreme Court is in many ways a culmination of his decades of hard work, perseverance, experience, and dedication to the cause of justice. Justice Bhatti's elevation to the Supreme Court is also significant in many ways. For one, it reaffirms that this court is not a Supreme Court of, may I say, Maharashtra or Delhi. This is the Supreme Court of India, and our aim here is to ensure that this court reflects the diversity of India. And I believe this has been one of the missions of the Collegium, to ensure that we represent the richness and the diversity of India. Many people have been critical of the Supreme Court for being a polyvocal court. But let us look at the flip side. The reason why we are a polyvocal court is because no two judges are similar. Here you have a judge from Maharashtra sharing a bench with a judge from West Bengal to decide a matter arising from Haryana. This is the true essence of the Supreme Court of India. It is not a polyvocal court. Rather, 
the Supreme Court is a people-centric court. Each, each judge of the Supreme Court brings their own unique legal experience and expertise to the table while deciding, deciding issues of law. People will start trusting the Indian judiciary as they do only when they see a reflection of themselves in the people who dispense justice. In that sense, we have to and continue to reflect the mirror image of our own societies. Ultimately, the Indian judiciary is a career service, and it is our responsibility to ensure that competent professionals, both from the bar and from the bench, get elevated to the Supreme Court. The elevation of Justice Bhuyan and Justice Bhatti has undoubtedly brought significant value to the Supreme Court. As I conclude, I would like to quote the following lines of Firak Gorakpuri. Bahut pehle se un kadmo ki ahat jaan lete hain. Bahut pehle se un kadmo ki ahat jaan lete hain. Tujhe ay zindagi hum dur se pehchan lete hain. I wholeheartedly congratulate Justice Bhuyan and Justice Bhatti on being elevated to the Supreme Court and wish them all the very best. One of the problems which judges of the Supreme Court face when they are appointed here is that there are no places to stay. In the high courts, you all have your own homes when you're appointed as a judge of the high court. But here we had a problem where judges who are appointed to the Supreme Court have to live in one room or two rooms of a state southern for six months, seven months because of the inadequacy of housing. And yet, there is no let up in the 75 SLPs which the Chief Justice assigns on every Monday and Friday. The area of accommodation is no answer or excuse. But we have tried to tap that by providing transit accommodation recently to our judges, because it is our endeavor that when a judge is appointed to the Supreme Court, you must feel that sense of belonging, that you'll walk into a place which is commensurate with your status and dignity as a judge of the Supreme Court. So this is the flip side from the judicial side. Mirrors what you have done for our colleagues before and now. And I would really like to compliment the SCBA for continuing this great tradition of inviting newly appointed judges to felicitate them and to remind our newly appointed colleagues that they are part of you and your heart. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir, for your kind words.